1931, let's say. I mean, all right, it's actually 2021. But imagine for a moment it's 1931 in Shanghai. And this neighborhood, these houses were built in 1929. Now that part is true. And aside from the cars, the scooters and a few other things, this is not so far removed from how things might have been in 1931. People live for the most part on the sidewalk. Of course, in those days, a sidewalk wouldn't have been metalled. In 1929, of course, there was a Wall Street crash and money around the world was generally lacking, except for in Shanghai. In Shanghai, there was a place that investors could finally bring some money and invest and make some money. Shanghai's population was burgeoning. The economy was super hot. This was the Nanjing decade, the decade of prosperity and relative peace from 1927 to 1937. And so what you need um, at a time like that is more food to feed the people. So in 1931, the Shanghai Municipal Council commissioned an abattoir. It was designed by British architects Balfour and built by Chinese contractors. And this is it. It is a magnificent, um, I'm hesitating here because some would say Art Deco, it has Art Deco elements. There are uh, decoratifs above the, the main portico and, and arcade at the front. These window elements that are very kind of Art Deco-ish were apparently designed to provide um, space to let light in and also the westerly winds which are predominant in Shanghai so taking the, the winds or the smell of the abattoir right out to the east and over the ocean. It's symmetrical with an embossed sort of top to the crown which is reminiscent of Art Deco but in other senses it's an early example, a very early example of brutalism it is now unique in the world. There used to be three of them, one in India, apparently, one in London, both of which were demolished. So this is the only one left in the world. At its height in the 30s and into the 50s and 60s, it could process up to 1,200 cattle a day, yielding 130 tonnes of meat a day. It's built from high quality, high strength Portland cement. It was imported, therefore, from Portland because there was none of that around locally, apparently. Um, it has a central core, which is 24 sided, but essentially round, that's connected to this square um, edifice by 26 sky, uh, um, sky walkways or sky um, bridges. And those bridges were designed to, to maneuver and to control the feed of cattle and so on, the flow of cattle. In the 1960s, it stopped being an abattoir and it became a sort of a cold storage facility. Uh, and after that, it became a medicine factory. Then it sort of fell into, into um, uh, nothing and was renovated in 2008 at a cost of 100 million renminbi. When it was built, it cost about 3.3 million tails of silver. A tail was essentially an ounce in those days. But I don't know what that converts to in, in modern dollars or modern sterling. Um, I can tell you that opposite this building is the public health safety building that was built at the same time, also out of this high quality Portland cement. And it, perhaps ironically, is a bona fide Art Deco building. It has the ziggurat form to the top. It has a symmetrical architecture with decoratives around what would amount to its frieze and even the chimneys Art Deco. So let's have a look inside at this wonderful, as you'll see, Escher-like building.
So we could be forgiven for thinking that Escher had a hand in the design of this wonderful abattoir, if an abattoir can be wonderful. There are 26 of these so-called air bridges that connect the inner core to an outer sort of annulus. This is a wonderful, or maybe a torturous place for an art school teacher to bring his or her students. A fantastic place to, to learn about perspective, even though the vanishing points are really, really hard to figure out. But look at all the lovely shading and lines, and you can imagine Turner coming here, in here and then practicing some of his wonderful architectural or engineering drawings. I love it. Now, oh, these old knees will bend. The surfaces of these um, pathways in here and the air bridges are often runnelled or terraced like this. And the concrete, or the cement I should say, includes these harder pieces of look like basalt, um, which presumably would have stopped cattle from slipping in either rainwater or blood. Did I mention Escher? I hope so. I'm sure he had a, a hand in design here. Now every now and then there are clearly signs of places where gates used to be. You know, this is probably the better one. So some sort of gate must have been sitting in, sitting in here at some point like this. And, and this one is clearly like that. So there were gates here at some point, no doubt guiding the uh, cattle that were being herded through here. Maybe tourists too. You know how tourists can be wild, unbecoming and dishevelled, crowded. Terrible, terrible things, tourists. Now the current usage of the abattoir is obviously not as an abattoir, but it's um, full of sort of chic design studios like this one, which has the lovely name of Yingstinkt. So to see this sort of thing, and I think that somewhere we'll look for it, is the Ferrari's owner's club which may have some samples to, to play with. Um, but the contrast between these sort of chic boutiques and places that look more like Colditz, prisoner of war camp, make the whole thing wonderfully surreal. Did I mention Escher? So when this was an abattoir in the 1930s, in Shanghai's heyday, there must have been hundreds, maybe thousands of cattle coming through here to be slaughtered for the population. And when there was a stampede, which maybe there used to be sometimes, they designed little alcoves or at least angular corners that people could back into to protect themselves from stampeding cows. I'm here to protect myself from stampeding tourists. There aren't any stampeding tourists. It's a, it's a quiet day, but you never know. Better to be safe than sorry. Now, some of these air bridges were made narrower on purpose so that only one cow at a time could pass through. I could wax on about tourists as well, but that's far too Escher-like. Did I mention Escher? Now, on the inside of the core is another core. This kind of reminds me of a concrete version of a Star Trek Enterprise ship. Um, Anyway, on the inside is this wonderful art gallery and more Escher-like air bridges and spiral staircases, beautifully made in this poured um, cement, Portland cement. So above me right now are these wonderful circular, accurate stairways. Now, to a geologist's eye, this, <laughs> this is like the Mid-Atlantic Rift with dead souls trying to get out. 
which I would do too, because, of course, in the Mid-Atlantic Rift, there's molten magma. I suppose it's Hades. It is wonderfully dungeon-like down here. That's it. This old abattoir, 1933, is reminiscent of something you would find in an Edgar Allan Poe story designed by Escher. Did I mention Escher? Torn souls. Apparently, this did feature in a 1962 comedy. But there must be scope here for a more um, macabre film, I would think. I see an idea forming. Let's think about this. And talking of Hades and the underworld, here is an old chimney. Two chimneys, in fact. And as you can see, we can't, we can't go to all places within the uh, abattoir. And in fact, as we walk around, there are many places that are, are yet to be used by anything. So they're still trying to make the best use of this wonderful building, I think. And this, this is a good place. This is imported Portland cement from halfway across the world. It's hard to believe that this kind of cement wasn't available locally, or they couldn't make it locally, but in any case, history has it that this cement was needed for its high strength quality, was imported from Portland and came via Portsmouth, apparently, which is the closest big port to Portland. Poured concrete. Good stuff. Did I mention Escher? 